My name is David Cross. I'm the marketing director at Easy Systems. Uh, we're a CMS provider. We're based in Norway and in New York. We were founded in 1999. Uh, one thing that's remained very consistent over the years is our passion for content. We thank you very much for coming today to Revision Boston. In the constantly changing world of digital publishing and content creation, we feel it's necessary to take a step back and discuss with the digital community what truly works and what doesn't. This is why we at Easy Systems decided to organize the Revision Speaker Series. At Revision, online publishers, marketers, editors, writers, and developers come together to discuss digital content at large and the challenges of today's content creators. The Speaker Series covers topics such as digital content strategies, content monetization, content technology, and user experience. This is our second Revision Boston, and today we're here to explore two key questions. How can we create, deliver, and optimize content for every user interaction? And which technology, design, and strategic frameworks are the right fit to build remarkable digital experiences and increase business efficiency? We thank you once again for joining us today. We have a wonderful mix of speakers on the agenda, and we look forward to their insights and observations on digital strategy and innovation. We'd like to thank our co-sponsor, the Christian Science Monitor, for providing us with this meeting space. I'd like to welcome Abe McLaughlin, manager of the Christian Science Publishing Society. Hi, everybody. Glad you're here. <laughs> uh, nice to have you here. I see we've got folks from around the world, Bort from Norway. I see Peter, who's usually in uh, BC. Um, and uh, glad to have you here. Do we have people on the phone or? No, OK. Um, so I'm the manager of the Publishing Society and uh, oversee the Christian Science Monitor. And do you want me to grab this one, maybe? I'm the manager of the Publishing Society and, and oversee the Christian Science Monitor. And the Monitor has gone through incredible changes in what feels like not that uh, uh, long a period of time from being print first as recently as 2008 to uh, web first and moving now towards social first. And I think we're all here because things change so fast and we've got to keep up. And in those changes, partners are essential. easy has been a partner of ours since um, for about five years and they've helped us navigate um, all these changes. And uh, so we're glad to have you all here and Easy here. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from the people who are gonna speak. Thanks. Thank you, Abe. Uh, some housekeeping before we introduce the first speaker. Uh, we'll have a coffee break midway through the event. Uh, we also have a table in the back by where you came in where we have a variety of uh, materials, uh, Easy Systems t-shirts and notebooks uh, and other goodies if you'd like to at any point in time go back there and grab yourself some gifts. Our first speaker is Kevin Nichols. He's the Executive Director of Experience at Avenue CX. Kevin is an award-winning thought leader, digital industry enthusiast, and author with more than 20 years of professional experience. For years, he led one of the largest content strategy teams in the world at Sapien Nitro. Recently, he launched Avenue CX, a consultancy specializing in enterprise content strategy, personalization, omnichannel, the Rebecca Schneider. He is author of Enterprise Content Strategy, a project guide, and co-author of UX for Dummies. Please welcome Kevin Nichols. Thank you. So, <clears throat> yeah, hopefully I can get this. Um, <clears throat> so thanks for having me. Uh, my name's Kevin Nichols. I am recently launching, and I say launching, <laughs> uh, participle present. Uh, we're officially launching in July, but we wanted to start a company that deals with looking at content challenges across the enterprise and working with large-scale companies in order to do so. And <clears throat> one of the reasons we want to do that is that's been something I've been doing now for a number of years. Um, today I want to talk to you about standing your content up for success in the era in which we are currently in. I get asked all the time, and normally, full disclosure, I work with Fortune 500 companies, international, global brands, uh, big organizations. But I will say this, I think the principles that are outlined in this can apply to any organization regardless of the size. And I think that what we're seeing in the industry right now 
um, is applicable regardless if you're a Hewlett Packard or if you're a nonprofit with like 50 employees. Um, I want to talk about what's going on in the industry, and I also want to talk about how to uh, how you should be looking at that if you really want to stand your content up for success for the long term. Uh, bear with me. I they already did an introduction. I love this quote. I put this in all of my presentations now. It's Athea Gibson. Uh, I love it because I hear all the time from large-scale organizations, we can't do this, or we're not set up to do this, or we can't change the way we deliver content. We can't change the way that we track content across channels. We can't even get our content to a point where we're able to, in a timely fashion, address our consumers' needs. And I think there are some large-scale organizations that are doing it, that are making an investment in it, that have realized that if they want to be competitively differentiated, they've got to stand all their content up so that it's successful, so that it meets the needs of their end users, it reaches the right audiences, it is optimized in the channels that users expect it to be optimized in, and it responds to user needs. <clears throat> um, brands that understand uh, how to succeed understand that getting content right is not easy. It means, in many cases, a fundamental rethinking of the way that you approach not only content, but your audiences that you're writing it for, the delivery mechanisms in which you've structured it to publish it, and the way that you govern that content throughout your business, your organization, or your enterprise. And <clears throat> what we're seeing today, and primarily because consumers are driving uh, expectations where they expect to be able to engage with content in a variety of channels and have it optimized within those channels, what we're seeing today is that a lot of organizations are not in a position to be able to deliver that. So uh, we're seeing a lot of what people call disruption or digital transformation or these types of things percolate up within the industry, but organizations are reacting and being reactive and how they respond to that as opposed to proactive or out in front of it and really driving uh, solutions that are gonna be able to meet the needs of their users. Things I hear from clients oftentimes when they're talking about content, and let me be clear here, when I mean, when I say content, the way I define it is any information that is recorded, period. So anything that you're putting out there that is information <coughs> is content. When I talk to organizations about making their content better because that's what we're really here today to talk about. How do we improve our content experiences for our audiences in every channel? The reaction I oftentimes get is, well, let's just focus on one channel. Uh, I also get this whole notion of enterprise, like looking at content across the enterprise, it's just way too big for us to even get our heads around. Um, I also hear, well, let's just throw something out there and see if it sticks. You know, that's especially what I hear when it comes to personalization or when it comes to making decisions to not put the best content experience out there, but one that will just work for the time being. Um, I hear we don't have the right approach, it's too expensive and we don't have time for it. And then finally, the one that I hear probably the most frequently is either our business units are not designed to support this or they never will. <clears throat> this is very common and no matter how many clients I've worked with over the years, some version of this has come out as either how they've expressed a challenge that they see in addressing content and standing it up for success, um, or their reticence to embrace a solution that they know is probably the right solution. There's five key takeaways I want to drive home today. And I'm gonna go through these slides quickly I am generally accused of taking a fire hose approach when I'm addressing these issues. The reason being is because it's not easy. And I don't believe there's a TED talk when you're talking about standing content up for success. I don't think that when you're talking about enterprise challenges, content challenges, that it is a sound bite approach that's gonna really address the issue. The, my decks are always leave behind. You can take it, you can look at it later, and you can digest some of the more detailed information. But I want people to understand it's not easy, it is challenging, and in order to get it right, there are critical areas that you really need to do a deep dive in and think deeply about. The first point I wanna make is take a breath, do a breather, 
ask the right questions. If you're wanting to get content right in your organization, you probably should be taking a pause. And a lot of companies and organizations want to tie improving their content to a new website or rolling out a new platform or rolling out a new solution. What I'm trying to get a lot of my clients to realize is let's take a pause and let's look at what we have and let's figure out where do we need to go from here. Let's review goals and objectives and business strategies. Let's look at our audiences and figure out what they need. And then let's come up with a roadmap and a game plan to structure and stand our content up so that it's successful regardless of which channel or which user we're trying to get it to. Steps for successful thinking mean that you have a content team in place, cross-functionally, that people from different business units, uh, not just SEO, not just a web team, but people from sales or people from product lines, <clears throat> people from uh, corporate, whatever that may look like, you assemble a team, you have them look at the content in your uh, business, the business and uh, goals and objectives you're trying to achieve with that content, the users you're trying to meet, and you come up with a list of initiatives that are going to get you to that, to that point. You want to make sure that you're looking across different areas. So in today's world, we want to ask about intelligent content solutions. Uh, can we support uh, personalization, for example? Uh, do we have a, a, a way to look at cross-channel experiences? So how content manifests across various channels and not just one? And can we set a performance-driven framework up? And we're going to talk a little bit more about what each of these mean. But really, the first thing I would advise anyone to do if you're really wanting to make your content better is to take a step back, look at what you have, and figure out where you need to go. And in most cases, that means doing a pause and making an investment in that pause, not just saying, well, we'll wait until we're launching a new website or something like that, and then we'll look at all this stuff. Next, and I think probably most of us work in interactive or digital or some form of that or we wouldn't be here. For me to stand up here and say leverage a consumer first approach, that's not rocket science. We've been talking about this now for the last 20 years, <clears throat> or possibly 30. I think what's happening is a lot of organizations aren't where they need to be with content. And some of them are driving uh, experiences and expectations that are forcing others to catch up. For an example, Macy's was one of the first uh, out there to embrace integrated product inventory where a customer could look up a product online, see if it's in a store, purchase it online, go to the store and pick it up. Um, if they purchased it uh, online and had it sent to them, they could take it back into a store. And through this whole experience, Macy would know even who that user was. Things like that are fundamentally driving consumer expectations in a way that they had not been driven before. So consumers expect these features and functionality in various devices and in various stages of their life cycle with your organization. <clears throat> it's a changing world out there. And I think that businesses that can really embrace the consumer first approach and deliver content that puts that consumer first are the ones that are going to be successful. I'm not the only one that's saying this. There's a ton of research and analysis out there from anyone from Forrester to Gartner. Um, <clears throat> lots of Lots of analysis is going into you know, what we're calling a consumer-first approach. What does that mean? It means that you need to invest in and know your consumers. And this is the first point I want to make clear. I always ask this question, so I'm going to ask it. How many of you have worked on a project within your own uh, businesses in the last two years where personas were involved? How many of you work in companies where there is a continuous investment in, actually, keep your hands up. <laughs> How many of you work in companies that continuously invest in personas annually? How many of you work in companies where your consumer behaviors stay the same and never change? So my point here is, is that if you're going to be uh, delivering content and getting that content to the users in a way that you want them to that's going to meet their needs, that's going to make them happy, that's going to fulfill your brand promise, 
you have to know who they are and you have to stay abreast of it. And it does mean an investment in understanding your users. The next piece of that is, is that you should be looking, once you know who those users are, what their needs are, and once you probably and hopefully understand your business goals and objectives, you should be looking at structuring your content creation processes that will deliver to those needs, as opposed to structuring them in a way that ties to business silos. So for an example, instead of thinking of, let's create this piece of content around this product, and let's use a distribution method that has my line of business for this product, let's look at what the user wants, and let's look at how they experience your brand. Are they gonna buy the product, then call support, and then call, uh, go to the website and maybe register it? Like, what does that experience look like, and how can you optimize that by delivering and publishing content in a way that's gonna meet the needs of the consumer, as opposed to the needs of your internal business silos? You want to put your customer at the center of all content decisions. I think omnichannel, and this, this diagram explains omnichannel, I'm not going to go into that right now, but omnichannel or not, this notion that the user should be at the center and the focal point of how you're thinking about any decision around content is key to a consumer first approach. You should ask yourself, what are their needs? Who are they? What content do they need to receive? When do they need to receive it? In which channel? What do their journeys look like? Are they looking to do something on a mobile device? Do they want something if they go into a store? If they're somebody who donates you know, to a nonprofit, what's the follow-up and how are they expecting that personalized experience to, to meet their expectations? The thing here is, is that the user and the business goals and organization, uh, the, the goals and objectives of the organization need to connect and those should be the objective of a business. Uh, I get this all the time, and I'm sure you all get this, but constantly business silos want to have their initiatives and their, what they believe are their, uh, what they need first and foremost, and that tends to drive a lot of these decisions. When we're talking about disruption and transformation, Macy's, for example, uh, really took a look at the way they were treating all of this. They hired a chief omnichannel and a chief content officer, and they spent millions of dollars reinvesting in the way that they address and create and think about content. They got that they had to restructure if they were gonna be able to deliver on this integrated uh, product inventory, or also what we call a single view of the customer, understanding who that customer is regardless of which channel they're in. And they also got that it was gonna take a lot of time, energy, and effort. But <clears throat> it's been paying off for them. So the next thing I want to say in terms, so we talked a little bit about uh, th thinking about the consumer first approach. You need to understand we're no longer in a day where one channel uh, experience and just focusing on the website or focusing on uh, social or any of these things is enough. Consumers live in a multi-channel world. And they cross those channels when they're trying to create and, and engage with the brand and uh, accomplish certain tasks. So even if you don't have the infrastructure to support optimized content in all of those channels, you should be looking at what are your user needs, how do we develop cross-channel strategies to engage with them, and from how we understand our users engage in different channels to, to uh, in order to accomplish a task, what content could we be optimizing in those channels? I think, you know, I put this slide in here because it's where we are, but every one I talk to is looking at how do we track cross-channel interaction? How do we optimize across the channels? It's a very important topic and businesses get that this is where they need to be. In order to do this, you want to look at, again, placing the consumer at the center of an experience, and you want to figure out what are their needs, what are the tasks that they're trying to create. You will start with the goals and objectives of your brand or your product, um, what it is that you as a business want to do. You'll look at the consumer needs around those goals and objectives, 
And then you'll start mapping out tasks as well as journeys that the user would engage with across a multitude of channels. And I'll just show you one quickly. So this is just an example of something that you could use to fill out as a tool in order to get you there. Um, you would start with a user type, which in this case is a persona, a user state, which in this case, you don't know that person, uh, they're anonymous, a task by a product, a step within that task, the channels they engage with, and then the content they need in order to get there. And this is really high level, so these end up being very detailed. But what this will do is it will show you, if you go through these exercises, for your high priority products, your high priority areas where you want to publish content, it will show you what content you need in which channels. And it will help you then determine where do we need to invest in order to get there. The other thing about this, so in addition to the cross channel, you need to be thinking about all of your content in terms of how it performs. And you want to be looking at that across the channels. So I always talk about closed loop frameworks. But anytime you publish content, you, that content should have a, a strategy behind it. There should be a goal, an objective, a user. You should answer who, what, where, when, why, and how. And in doing so, you should be able to measure how that content's performing. All content is a brand asset. It's about whether or not you want to stand it up so that it can be effective that becomes a question. And in order to do that, you should be looking at a closed loop process that takes into an account content, where it lives within channels, how it's measured and optimized, and then how you respond to that. The point here is, is that you should then take all of that information and, and be able to make informed decisions of where to take that in the future. And notice within this framework how governance sits in the center, right? All of your decisions around content and standing it up for success should be based on how that content's performing. I oftentimes use this image to convey, you know, what that looks like. So you have all these inputs that you should be looking at. So what are my business needs? How is my content performing vis-a-vis -vis an assessment? What industry insights and competitive things are out there? Uh, what are analytics you know, telling me? What are new ideas generated? Um, and then finally, all of those user inputs where I said you need to be looking at those continuously if you're gonna have a consumer first approach. You look at those, that then helps you inform what are we gonna do in the future? How are we gonna take this content? What areas do we need to invest in? What's not performing the way that it should be and what do we do about it? The next point I want to make is operational readiness. And this sounds a little glim, but it's not, because I think that if organizations understand that they have to look at, you know, they have to go under the hood, they have to ask difficult questions, they have to determine that if they're going to get content right, it may mean a rethinking of the way that they do uh, their strategy internally, then they can get to the point of figuring out where they need to go. But operational readiness is key. Uh, I work with organizations all the time, and they say, well, we want a personalization strategy. I will ask a series of questions once I hear that to not only determine are they ready for it, but help them realize in order to do personalization effectively, there's certain things that they need that they don't currently have. In this era of what we're calling, you know, or what many call digital disruption or digital transformation, we're seeing that all of this stuff is going on and organizations are trying to figure out how to respond to it. The best thing they can do, and I noted before that with, with that pause, is to figure out what do we need in order to support and respond uh, to what we're seeing and in order to make sure that our content's successful. Ask yourself some, uh, we're going to go through a few questions. Can I optimize my current channels and frameworks with my current technology and people? Am I currently set up to be able to deliver content strategically and, and making it uh, the best experience for my end users and audiences within the way that I'm currently set up as an organization? Ask yourself, are your processes set up to deliver optimized content to all customer touch points that your customers use in engaging with your brand. 
An example of thinking about this is when you want to roll out something like personalization or omnichannel or performance-driven content, take that pause that I talked about earlier, figure out really what is necessary to go into this to make it successful, map it out, and then ask yourself, am I really ready to embrace this? I throw this up here not because I expect you to digest it, but because I want to show you like to do personalization, for example, uh, effectively and to make it uh, meaningful for your end users, a lot goes into it. It's not just, oh, we're going to roll out a new website, let's throw personalization on top of it, and let's see if it sticks, you know? There's serious thinking that needs to go into it, and all of these things within these phases requires an ongoing approach and tactic and processes and people to support them. So it gets back to that operational and organizational readiness. By the way, it doesn't mean that without all these things you can't do personalization, but it does mean that you really have to think seriously about how ready you are to roll out some of this stuff if you want it to be effective for the long term. You should be looking at everything in this graph, editorial, audience, business goals, data, technology, costs, legal, considerations. Um, <clears throat> and then from that, asking yourself, do I have the right people? Do I have the right content? Can I publish and measure across channels? Do I have the right processes to support each? Do I have the governance to support it? Uh, coming out of that, you can then figure out, well, what, where, the, where are those gaps? What do we need to do in order to think, you know, uh, in order to stand our content up for success? Do we have to boil the ocean? Are there some interim, you know, things that we can do to get it there? Finally, my last point is, with all of this and what we're seeing in terms of where the industry is going, if you're going to get cross-channel right, if you're going to get personalization right, if you're going to get user engagement with your brand correctly, it really is more of an enterprise focus. Um, we're no longer at a point where we can just say that it's for a singular channel. Your users don't engage with that, and or, or your users are not going to engage with you that way, and you need to be looking at how every piece of content you put out there that represents your brand allows a user or an audience member to, to develop and evolve the relationship with it. The way I define enterprise content strategy is simple. I say it is a commitment to position all organizational content for success so it can evolve every consumer relationship with the brand. If you think about it that way, the importance of getting content right throughout your organization becomes something that even the highest level executive in your company should take an interest in. Every piece of content is an asset. Every piece of content, and this is a Content Strategy Alliance, by the way. I'm the chairperson for the Best Practices Committee on that. If you go to contentstrategyalliance.org, you'll find like 50-some templates for free. This is one of them. But you should be able to, with all of your content, starting at its highest level, answer who, what, where, when, why, and how. Why do we have it? What objectives and goals does it need to fulfill? Who are our audience? You should be able to look at it and figure out, even to the page type level, what strategy is necessary, or what strategy is that content fulfilling? You should be thinking about taking a governance model that incorporates cross-functional areas throughout the enterprise. So don't just think of content as we're going to have web governance and that's going to oversee our content for the web. You need to be looking at a broader scale. It needs to be all content in your organization. Stakeholders who represent that need to meet regularly. You need to be using tools like editorial calendars for planning. You need to be assessing how that content's performing and then having conversations about that and what that means and where to take it. Omnichannel, personalization, cross-channel, all of these things require fairly detailed strategies. Getting successful, getting content right, standing it up for success requires, you know, some serious thinking about it. And we're at a point now where band-aids no longer work. So if brands and organizations want to stand up their content for success, they have to understand they need to approach it strategically and seriously and that there's investment and that there's time and energy that goes into that. And this is just a roadmap, for example, 
on enterprise content for uh, personalization. But again, my point here is not for you to like look at all the steps in this. My point here is to make the case that it's complicated, that it takes time, and that it requires certain skill sets in order to support it. So in summation, I don't want to scare, like the point of this presentation is not for people to walk away and say, we can't do it. The point is, is to give you some critical areas to dive into to think about of what is really required if you want to stand content up so that it can be successful for the long term in your organization. And my hope is that in addressing some of these points, you can take it away, you can go back to your businesses, your brands, your organizations, and say, let's start looking at some of these things. Let's start having conversations about some of these things, and let's figure out internally how we can address this, even if we're just taking one particular area, like personalization or a website or whatever, um, so that we can create more meaningful experiences and content experiences for our audiences. I'll take, do, are we doing questions now or? <laughs> I know it's a lot there'll be a leave behind. <laughs> so I think, okay, uh, Nordstrom is doing it really well. Macy's is doing it really well. Amazon, but everybody already knows this for personalization. They totally get it. They wrote the guidebook on it. And by the way, all of those brands, so they make a significant investment in getting these things right. And they've been doing it now for a while. Um, Netflix is really good for consumer insights and for content, like all of their content decisions are made around uh, information about their consumers and their audiences and what their audiences are doing. So there's four right there. There is, I believe at the end of this, um, there's not, I will put it in here. I'll put it, before I upload this to SlideShare, and I will upload it, I'll put an annotated bibliography in here that gives the latest research reports that are referenced in this that will also highlight some of the brands and organizations that are, that are doing it well. Oi, uh, small companies. Um, I don't. I'll have to think about that. I would say look at roles, right? So in a nonprofit, in a smaller organization, people wear many hats. There may be a person that's like doing the S I just worked with a nonprofit. I can't mention their name, but they have a person doing the SEO that's also like doing the editorial guidance for authors, right? But you wanna make sure that your brand or your organizational promise, who's ever responsible for the branding, has a role there, that the product folks or your offering or your services or whatever your nonprofit, your mission folks, have a seat at the table. You wanna make sure social is represented, the social media, analytics, legal if it's relevant, uh, the content team, which is oftentimes a web content team and technology, and there's probably going to be working groups underneath that that are like strategy, ops, tech, marketing, publishing, maybe taxonomy, but you want these types of roles to be represented. And you want to make sure you're responding to what in a larger organization or any size organization those roles would be, you know, be, be fulfilling in terms of, of what the work is. We've, uh, so when we launched our company, we specifically wanted to target the B2B market. And by the way, our website's launching in a month. If you go to Avenue CX, you're gonna see a splash. Our reason for that is we feel like B2Bs are a bit behind the game when it comes to